Uh, Tomer. Hey, Ty. Good to see you. Um, everyone good to go? That should be good to go? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, in your time, both as, you know, Lakers player, Clippers coach, what have you learned about the uh, Lakers-Clippers rivalry over the years? Uh, I haven't learned much. When I played for the Lakers, that was 25 years ago. So um, everything's different. So I really don't, you know, I recall. The biggest thing I recall is Shaq having, I think, 63 points versus the Clippers on his birthday. Um, but outside of that, um, you know, I really haven't had a long time to experience it. Thanks. Go to Justin Russo. Hey, Coach. How you doing? Good. How are you? Doing well. Uh, you've been pretty open with us about the strategies that you have going into games and how you want to defend certain guys. What can you tell us about the game plan tonight when it comes to trying to upset the timing and rhythm of Anthony Davis? Um, you know, just double teaming him um, as much as we can, you know, making him play in the crowd. Um, you know, he's too good offensively. Just let him play one-on-one, -on -one, and we know that. So uh, we want to mix up coverage, try to front him sometimes, sometimes come and double team, um, sometimes put our center on him a little bit. So uh, we're going to mix it up, you know, want to bring a physicality um, and try to keep him off his sweet spot, but also guys being his shrinks, you know, shrinking the floor and making sure he doesn't have a lot of driving seams, you know, when he's on the post-ups. Let's take BT. Happy belated birthday, Coach Lou. Thanks, Broderick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, with so many guys in and out of your lineup and COVID being what it is this season, how have you been able to put in your offense for the playoffs that are coming up? Um, really, we scaled back a lot, BT. Um, you know, a lot of things we wanted to add going forward, but you know, with the addition of Rondo late in the season, with the addition of Cousins, who's now who's in the rotation, um, we got to scale back to make sure those guys catch up. And you know, we have a good enough team offensively that we, you know, been building the right habits all all year. You know, six seven months of just you know trusting the pass, getting to the paint, drive, kick, swing. You know, teams double teaming. You know what we're supposed to do. Um, post ups when they double team Kawhi getting to our spacing. So you can really simplify the offense with this team uh, because you have nine guys that shoot over forty percent. So you can shoot simplify the offense. You know, put the ball in Rondo, PG, Kawhi's hands, and let those guys make the right play and right pass, and then just kind of play from there. So uh, we want to make sure we just simplify as much as possible because it's a Rondo right now. When we go into the playoffs, these guys can play without thinking. Thanks, BT. We'll go over to Andrew. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I have two for you. One, one is just they don't have – Lakers are down a, a number of ball handlers tonight. I guess you have the luxury of having a pretty full backcourt. How do you – how do you, can you guys make life difficult beyond already what it is for the Lakers for those ball handlers tonight? Um, just trying to put pressure on them as much as we can, you know, getting up the floor, you know, with Pat, with Reggie, with Rondo, um, try to disrupt as much as possible. Um, you know, but that means it's going to be a steady dose of AD, you know, which, you know, you don't want a lot of. Uh, so we got to mix things up with AD, just make sure we keep him, you know, try to keep him off balance as much as possible. Um, like I said, Coach Bogle is a good coach, so, you know, he, he'll figure it out uh, what they need to run and how they need to get into their offense and who they need to play through. And then you just talked about, you know, during this last stretch run about really wanting your guys to be rested and, and ready, and but it seems like, there's some obstacles maybe where you only have a few opportunities left to really test out these rotations like you've wanted. Um, and then with the West seating still so much up in the air, I guess, how do you envision balancing trying to feel comfortable with the rest guys have, but also with the lineups that you kind of haven't seen yet? Yeah, it's a tough balance. You know, we got to listen to our medical staff, our, you know, our sports science guys, and, and just listen to our players and see how their body is feeling. You know, the most important thing for us, like I said, is health. I'm trying to get into the playoffs healthy and, um, you know, just kind of go from there. Thanks, Ty. Thanks. Go over to Dan. Hey, Ty, you guys have so many point guards. The Lakers have none. You, you're not willing to loan them one tonight, are you? Or... No, they don't need much help. You know, they're the better <laughs> champs. Um, they still have a championship DNA. Um, they play that way. And like I said, just, you know, Coach Bogle was in the same situation we've been in. And, um, you know, when AD and Brown was out, just kind of, you know, finding ways to win with that team, playing a different style of basketball. And now just figuring out how to, you know, implement his guys back in with AD coming in, with Drummond coming in, um, and when Brown gets back. So it's going to take some time to get in that flow and get that rhythm back. And, uh, you know, we're kind of going through the same thing right now ourselves. Yeah, the um, <clears throat> to take you away from tonight's game just for a quick second, uh, next weekend is a Hall of Fame inductions. Um, obviously, Kobe will be part of that amazing class. 
um, having played with him and now coaching guys like Paul and Kawhi who grew up watching Kobe, do you, do you see any elements of, of Kobe's game in the way that either of those guys play? Um, I think with Kawhi, just, you know, the mid-range, um, some of the footwork. Um, I think um, with PG, you know, Kobe when he first came in, just to build the athleticism they had. Um, but, you know, um, far as similarities, you know, not too many, you know, because like I said, Kobe was, he played in the triangle, so he didn't get a lot of, a lot of chance to see his ball handling the capabilities. But um, he can do all the and one stuff, all the tricks, all, you know, everything. But he kind of just condensed his game into – you know, fit in the triangle and understanding what field one and what, you know, we needed for our team. So um, a couple couple of things are the same, but, you know, overall, it's a lot of differences as well. Thanks, Ty. Thanks. Go to Law. Hey, Ty. How are you feeling, man? I'm good. So I remember at the end of March, we were asking you about close games versus blowouts, and you said you'd rather blow teams out, you know, um, it's for, as far as avoiding the close game question. But uh, you guys haven't actually won a game by 20 points uh, since April started. We're in May. And Paul George, he was actually talking about how team needs to be better to start games and how that would carry over through the end of games. Uh, do you share that sentiment with, with Paul about, you know, just the importance of getting back to blowing teams out again? <laughs> Well, you're not going to blow every team out. And, um, you know, just talking to uh, Noah Eagle today when I was doing Fox, um, you know, he just told me that we're fourth in um, um, clutch minutes, you know, as this all-star break. Um, so uh, we have gotten better. You know, I know Cam was pretty, you know, mad about that early on in the season, you know, but I said it's going to take some time. And um, now we've gotten to that point where, you know, we've been able to execute down the stretch and, you know, being fourth in the clutch minutes this all-star break is, it's pretty good for us, you know, and we got to keep working on it. Um, but you, know, you got to give all the credit to PG and Kawhi, you know, a lot of film work with those guys and the spacing and just letting those guys understand that, you know, you, you can still trust the pass. You know, we know it's a lot of your shoulders in the games. You want to take over the games, but your teams are going to double team teams are going to blitz, you know, just making that extra pass and making that play for your teammate and just got to keep trusting. And um, so all the credit goes to those two guys. Thanks. Looks like that time for one last one. We'll go to Shane Young. Hey, Ty. I hope all is well today. You've talked a lot this season about Sean Fine and Kenny Atkinson and the role they've played in player development this season, particularly with Terrence Mann. I'm curious, even with your team having a lot of veterans on it, how important have those additions to your staff been, do you think, this season? Oh, very important. You know, I think, you know, every single day they call, you know, guys getting their vitamins. And, you know, Roy Rogers has been great with Zoo, you know, um, just working with him and, you know, keeping him fine-tuned, you know, Sean Fine with the shooting with Terrence Mann, you know, Kenny running the whole program, you know, with Amir Coffee and, you know, Luke Kennard staying ready because they're playing 404 and 505, Pat Pat staying ready. And um, just having a program in place that every single day, guys know what they're going to do, what they're doing, and it's all laid out for them. That's all we got for you today, Coach. Have a good game. Thank you. All right.